All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first session of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. We are set in the year 2414 aboard a brand new specialized starbase that has been constructed in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. Now, I know some of us may look a little bit different, but you should recognize most of us as coming from the Fenrir game. And on that note, this game is technically in the same quote-unquote canon as Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers. But what I would say is you don't need to have watched any of those games to appreciate and enjoy this one. Now, of course, if you do like doing due diligence and catching up, the VOD should be on my YouTube and most of the popular pod podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify, the links to which should be below the stream. Uh, with that said, let's have everyone go around and introduce themselves and uh, their new characters, uh, very briefly at least. Uh, so let's start with our new captain. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. I'm playing your captain, Kijwick. I'm a Zaldin, and uh, this episode is going to see me take my first command. Uh, we hope you like what you see, and if you want to hang out, you can find me on Twitter at TrekNexus. All right, and then uh, John, I believe next is you. Uh, yes, my name is John. I play uh, Lieutenant uh, Terrell, the hotshot pilot, uh, and I live in Seattle, uh, and uh, just looking forward to playing a, a new game. All right, Matthew, you're up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play the Cation Chief Engineer, uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, Jana, uh, who is somewhat insecure about his promotion to uh, Chief Engineer of a rather major star base. All right. Up next, Aaron. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Keeve Dothig, the Chief Medical Officer of October. Um, really looking forward to playing this. Super excited. Um, find me online at Panorama Tent. And certainly last but not least, we have Watney. I'm Watney. I play the uh, half Betazoid and half human um, station chief of security. And uh, it's Lieutenant Commander Arzu Stetko. Very nice. And with that said, I am ELH, uh, ELH MK1 on socials. I am your game master for the evening. But yeah, let's go ahead and run our shiny new intro. coming back all right welcome back uh so something i like doing for all of my games is having the players do an opening log and today that falls to our newest captain so mr kishwick take it away you're muted you're muted <laughs> way to wake up it's a good start let's do get it. any worse way to go Captain's captain log. Captain's log, start at 914-22 Mark 5. It is with great anticipation and some trepidation that I record this log. My first is Captain. Right now, my wife Jen and I are on the freighter Saragossa, two hours out from Deep Space October, a brand new class of space station, and my first formal command in 27 years. Has it really been that long since the attack? In 2385, I directed security at Utopia Planitia, playing my part in what was supposed to be the greatest relocation and aid campaign in Federation history, the highest manifestation of its principles. 
Instead, the synths laid waste to it, and the core of the Federation has trembled ever since. The following inquiries placed the blame on my security protocols. When the truth came to light, Starfleet issued a formal pardon just 13 years ago, but it's not enough. My trust was stolen, and I have carried this wound in my heart, grieving for the lives lost. For as long as Mars burns. When the supernova finally came, the oceans of my homeworld were damaged by its radiation. I went home and spent two decades as the Zaldan ambassador to Kronos, securing assistance for recovery and successfully keeping Zald out of the war between them and the Federation. I felt doing so much good would bring me peace, but we Zaldans are uniquely known for nurturing our grudges against deception. Still, it did not stop me from spending the last two years instructing at the academy, bringing two classes of aspiring cadets up to speed on the security and command failures committed during the war. Being back in the uniform reignited my passion for exploration and getting into trouble in the unknown. So when I was chosen to be the first commander of a new station, I jumped at the chance to open up a new frontier of exploration. Exploration is an understatement. DSO is top of the line in every way, and Starfleet built the damn thing in only 18 months, a testament to their efficiency. Right in the middle of nowhere, too. I look forward to receiving my senior staff, especially security. I've kept a keen eye on defense R&D, and the latest innovations are impressive, to say the least. Two members of my staff are also en route, my XO Hatea and Lieutenant J.G. Jero Terrell. I hope his parents know what he's in for. They're coming in on the USS Howe, a 50-year-old Centaur class that should have been retired after we won the Dominion War. I expect Chief Jana is going to have a field day with her when he finds out where her new home port. Curiously, the captain of this freighter, Yanin, is the twin sister of my soon-to-be XO. And, and right about then, you get an interruption in your log. It is uh, Yanin, and she says, uh, Captain, we're going to need your help up here at the con. Speak of the devil and log. All right. So we take our first scene is actually going to be on the deck of uh, the Saragossa, the trading vessel that is bringing the captain out to DSO. Now, the Saragossa is an older Antares class, so the bridge itself is um, not really, you know, fancy. You know, it's it's got a helm position. Uh, it's got a few stations devoted to science and life support and things like that. But uh, Kijwick, as you step onto the bridge, uh, you, of course, see the traitor, uh, Yanin. Now, Yanin is a spitting image of her sister, who you'll find out later. Um, she it has sort of a darker skin color. Uh, she has striking green eyes, and she wears her dark, long hair up in a ponytail, but uh, doesn't even look at you as you approach in. She just sort of motions at the con, where you see, to put it lightly, you see a Jensen, or someone who has no idea what they're doing at the con, doing a very bad job of it. Sir, if you will. And uh, the wet behind the ears crewman sort of looks up at you and goes, um, um, uh, 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 okay, yes, uh, yes, you can sit here now. And uh, he gets up and vacates the area very quickly. Kishwick will sit down. Computer, reconfigure this layout to defaults. And the computer churns for a moment, and you see that instead of re returning to defaults, it remains the same way as the previous occupant was doing. Of course. All right, let's get a crack at this. All right. So uh, another detail about this bridge is as you sit down and look at your console, you look back up at the view screen, and what you see is sort of a long shot of Deep Space October. Now, uh, Deep Space October is similar to the Starbase One, the one about one around Earth. Um, it has the same sort of similar shape, but with some crucial changes. Uh, particularly, the sort of saucer slash conic or conic top has sort of a blast shield that uh, covers about three fourths of the area. 
And about midway between the quote unquote saucer section and where engineering is, there are three landing platforms that can accommodate uh, very large vessels all the way up to sovereign classes if need be. And below that, of course, you have some shielding around the reactor and then pretty much a standard starbase below that. But uh, one thing you would note, Kijwick, as you're looking at all this, is just the amount of ships in the area. Um, the how is here. There's freighters from every single faction you can imagine. You're seeing Ferengi. You're seeing Bajoran. You're seeing Cardassian. Hell, you're even seeing a few Klingons out there. But it all seems that your destination is the Starbase. Yanine, can you coordinate with station control to let them know that we'll be docking soon? Uh, yeah. And she taps a few things on her console. And she says, this is uh, Freighter Saragossa requesting landing coordinates. And there's silence. And then in a very garbled, like, the drive through is not working sort of tone, uh, you kind of hear a... <laughs> And Yanine sighs and says, great, something else wrong with my ship. Wonderful. Use the signal lights to do that we would use in light of missing communications to signal our position and speed. Also, Dag, you got super quiet, but at least I heard you. All right. So uh, first roll of the campaign, because uh, we want to get you momentum. I'd like you to roll me a control and a con, please, to see how well you do with your running light theory. Difficulty is zero. And uh, can I get astro navigation as a focus? I'll give it to you, yeah. Look at that, two successes to start off with, which is two momentum. So yeah, you begin the uh, somewhat archaic process of, you know, sort of strobing the running lights to signify to station control how to deal with you. And sure enough, the station responds in kind. They flash their lights. And you know that you are slated to enter into the interior of the saucer, the main sort of docking bay. And ahead of you, you can even see that the docking doors slide open to accommodate you. Now, I, what I would say is that while the docking doors could easily fit um, all the way up to a galaxy class side by side with another galaxy class, there is still a margin of error here where you have to be careful with so many ships traveling in and out. Cut impulse speed, cut impulse engines, uh, thrusters to three quarters. All right. So you begin taking her in and as you get closer and closer to the station, uh, it almost feels as if you're about to sort of crash into a mountain. That's how large this station is. Um, but you keep on track. You keep steering the vessel right in past the doors and right up to the berth. And there's sort of a small shutter throughout the vessel as you can feel the gangplank being extended and attaching to one of the exterior airlocks. And Yanin says, well done, Captain. That'll be an experience I'll never forget. Well, if I know one thing, if your career as a captain fails, you can come pilot for me anytime. I appreciate that. I look oh, forward and, to meeting uh, your sister. I was actually about to say that. When you see my sister, tell her I still know she owes me four strips of latinum. Will do. Thank you, Captain. Permission to disembark. Go for it, Captain. And Kiswick will nod to the bridge crew and exit. All right. So I'm curious, uh, Kijwick, where is your first stop now that you're on station? Uh, Kijwick is going to go uh, to the reactor core and to check in on the staff there to see if his chief engineer is present. Okay. So you, uh, you consult the computer and you do find your way to engineering, but you also see that your Cation engineer is not there. And when you consult the computer again, you find that he is in something called Penthouse. Memory serves, that's one of the clubs on board the station, all right. And Dag, okay. your quiet is of everything again. I don't know if that's me or you. 
He's quiet for me as well. Technical testing, testing. Yep, we can hear you. Uh, okay. I got a weird pop up on my screen. Epic Games wants me to do something. All right. Well, then, um, let's go to medical. And medical. We'll hit, we'll hit uh, the club on the way back to Ops. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, of course, you follow navigation or perhaps even your own insight. Maybe you did a little research on the layout of the station. Uh, but either way, uh, you are going to uh, Medbay. And Medbay is maybe even doing a disservice um, to say how large and expansive and advanced this space is. Um, it literally looks like the interior of a hospital. You've got everything from a small waiting room to a staffed front desk. And beyond, if you sort of peek around the corridors, uh, Captain, what you see is uh, full operating tables, isolation wards, uh, standard wards. There's a counselor's office here. It's everything you would want in a Starbase sick bay. Uh, but as you come in, uh, the nurse on duty uh, sort of looks at you. Uh, they are a Vulcan, uh, looks to be kind of young uh, as far as Vulcans are concerned. Um, has that standard Vulcan bowl cut. Uh, and of course the pointed ears and the always raised eyebrow. And uh, the nurse says, oh, hello there, Captain. Shall I page the doctor to let him know you are here? Please. And uh, I think at this point, uh, if you would care to describe your character, Aaron. Yeah, um, Dr. Dottig is a Tellarite. Uh, he probably stands at just below chest height for Kijwick. Um, he is, I guess, as far as Tellarites go, uh, blonde, although you see that's becoming streaked with a few strands of white um, as he is well, he, well he's, he's into his 40s. Um, and he also walks with a barely perceptible limp uh, favoring his left leg. Uh, and he sort of rounds the corner here, takes one look at Kijwick and says, what do you want? Checking in, doctor. Captain Kijwick. And he will extend his arm. Hmm. Um, yeah, Dottig will step forward and take his hand and say, yes, we expected you. Although, uh, your station is sub-satisfactory. Sub-satisfactory? The Corps of Engineers assures me it's top of the line. What are you oh, lacking? Oh, well, I'm sure the Corps of Engineers worked very hard. However... Sorry, my internet this, dropped for a second. This medical bay is not up to my standards. You might want to take that up with the senior requisitions officer at your soonest ability. Well, as chief medical officer, I feel it is my duty to take it up with the captain, which I am doing now. I That's would like to know how I am supposed to perform organ transplants without one single ounce of biomimetic gel. Biomimetic gel is strictly control. What do you need it for organ transplants for? It accelerates the healing process. Makes the transition out of convalescence much smoother. I'm no doctor, so forgive me, but don't we have dermal and osteo-regenerators for these kinds of things? We do. However, they often provide lingering discomforts that can persist for weeks, months, or years, depending on the subject. I'll put you As a physician, it is my duty to heal people without, well, without thought to regulation. My job is to make them comfortable and healthy. I would do no less for anybody. I'm glad we align on that. And it is, it is good to see you again. Yes. Our time at the Academy was well spent. Teaching. <laughs> yes, well, you're a little too old to have gone to the Academy with me. 
true. Did my records come in? I believe so, uh, nurse. And uh, Nurse Chan looks through his papers in front of him, his data pads, and says, uh, yes, I have them right here. Good. We'll schedule your first physical for 0650 tomorrow. Understood. I will take your request for biomimetic gel to the senior requisitions officer, and we'll see if we can get you a leader or two. I appreciate it. Carry on, doctor. And Kiswick will nod to everybody and step out of the sick bay. And we'll uh, we'll do the next scene in a moment. Let's quickly fix webcam. So uh, Dag and John leaves yours on, and then it would be Jana. Then Dante, sorry, I messed up everything. And then Stetko. Now the good news is it's really easy to fix, so it's not a big deal. And again, first stream. There's got to be something that goes wrong. Always has to be something. But yeah, uh, Kiswick, now that you've checked in with uh, MedBay, are you going to go to Penthouse or are you going to go somewhere else along the way? Yeah, I will go ahead and ask the computer to direct me to Penthouse. All right. So uh, you're led down in towards the sort of lower reaches of the station. And when you finally turn the corridor and see the entrance to Penthouse, um, I'm going to use a Mass Effect uh, reference here for a moment, but you know how when you first get on station, you're directed towards that one sort of seedy bar in the corner? That's sort of what you're seeing here, where it's one of those, you know, maybe the walls aren't as pristine, maybe the lighting's flickering a little bit, but above the door is a neon sign uh, in pinks and blues that literally just says penthouse. Well, this looks like a nice place for a beer. And Kiswick uh, will go in. All right. So uh, as you enter penthouse, several things immediately assault your senses. The first is the overwhelming sight of reds and pinks and even light blue neon colors. Um, all things considered, this is actually a rather nice club. Uh, it looks to have about three floors, uh, all connected by sort of swirling staircases. Um, the clientele seems to be mostly civilian, but every so often you can spot a Starfleet officer or crewman uh, having a drink, conversing with friends, things of that nature. Um, but probably the one person that sticks out among everything else uh, is the Vulcan behind the main bar. And that is because, unlike any Vulcan you've ever seen, she doesn't have that dark hair. Instead, it's a, almost like a hot pink that sort of matches the bar around her. Kiswick will walk up to the bar and uh, wait his turn if it's busy. It's not that busy. I mean, uh, the bartender sort of gets a few people their drinks, then turns to you and says, Ah, Captain, good to see you. Let me guess, you're here for Jana, right? Uh, Jana, but first, if you have an Andorian Kolsch. Oh, a little daring today, aren't we? It's been a long drive. And uh, even as you're saying that, she's already reaching under the counter and pulling out a glass as well as the bottle. And she says, how much would you like? A shot? Full drink? Uh, 16 ounces. 16 ounces it is. Pours you a glass, slides it on over to you. And because I don't remember off the top of my head, it is not. I knew you would have a prop for this. I, I just had a feeling. Nice. Is this... Is this the 95? That's actually the 93. Oh, you might want to. I haven't had it at this temperature before. Still good. What was your name? Ah, I am Valon. I am the owner and proprietor of this lovely establishment. I hope we get along, Captain. I do too. I assume uh, that Chief Arnold will have all of the requisite paperwork regarding your establishment. 
Eh, let's just say I might have cut a few corners, but I assure you everything here is legit. Unlike a certain club you might have on your promenade. And she actually frowns like, not like a a, a, a Vulcan frown where, the, you know, they just slightly turn down their mouth. Like, full-on emotive frown. We may have to talk later. Right now, can you point me to Mr. Jana? Of course, I'd be happy to. And uh, she sort of leans over the bar and points up at the second floor. And sure enough, you do see uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Jana sitting at a table. And uh, Matthew, if you'd care to describe your character. So uh, Jana is a rather robust looking uh, golden brown furred Cation. Uh, he is sitting at the table, uh, nursing a drink while holding a pad using his tail. And he is making a few modifications to it and to the like while he is sipping some kind of drink. You're not sure what it might be. Uh, he seems intently focused on his work and he is sitting off in the back. He's alone. Uh, very few people are sort of around him. He's, he's clearly isolated himself. What color is the drink? Green. Excellent. Uh, Kijwick will approach, not from a, from it, from in front, to so as not to surprise the young man. Uh, as soon as he glances up very briefly and sees the captain approaching him, he would quickly clatter down the pad on his on the table and uh, rise to stand at attention. Please, uh, at ease. Uh, are you okay, sir? Uh, it's a. I, I didn't think I'd be uh, meeting you until our, my first duty shift, sir. That's all right. I'm just looking around the station, trying to take the view in and meeting the members of my senior staff. Uh, uh, and he'll motion towards the seat. Would you like? Uh, would you like to sit down, sir? Uh, sure. Okay. And he will return to his seats, shuffling slightly. Aldebaran whiskey? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good eye. <clears throat> it's a good drink. You have good taste. Oh, well, uh, you can actually thank uh, our, well, soon to be helmsman, uh, Jaro Terrell. Uh, he uh, introduced it to me back at the academy. You know Mr. Terrell well? Actually, that's uh, one of the reasons I'm here. After spending two years with him in the academy, dorming with him, I can't work with uh, anything other than horrible pounding racket around me. Hmm. Have you ever listened to Klingon music? Uh, no, sir. I can't say I'm familiar with it. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm not particularly cultured. <clears throat> anything that you'd recommend? Uh, most of their operas. I can share my personal database with you later. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. I, I very much appreciate that. If you're looking for discordant melody, you will find it in abundance. How long have you been on the station? Remind me. Well, uh, it's only been a few weeks now. Uh, I've been part of the teams that have finalized construction. I mean, it's still going on. If you want to take a look at the, the reports that I've been filing, and he'll pull up something on the pad and uh, hand it over to you if you want to take a look at it. He'll extend it to you. Uh, Kiswick will. Again, put another hand out. Uh, well, it, it's it's been just a few weeks. Uh, I helped to reroute some of the plasma conduits on uh, H deck, and uh, did some work in the docking rings. A formal report is not required. I would like to gauge how you feel about the station and your time here. Oh, uh, is it comfortable? It, it, A little uncomfortable right now, sir, uh, but... Um, That's okay. I appreciate the candor. You you may always feel as if you can speak freely around me, whether we are in a recreational setting or in a staff meeting. In fact, I require it. And you'll see that he does settle slightly at that and picks up the drink, downs a little bit of the Eldovan whiskey, puts it back, and he says, okay, uh, well, sir, I appreciate that and if it's candor you're, you're looking for you'll get it uh with respect to the station well it's a technological marvel those cryoneural gel packs are unlike anything that we've ever installed on any federation ship or starbase and 
this station's processing power is probably greater than most civilizations. But I'll be frank, this ship, or rather this station, was constructed in a hurry. There are going to be gremlins popping up everywhere. I've got engineering teams tracking down sensor ghosts. Internal security systems on half the station are throwing up Cardassian and Jemadar invaders out of nowhere. Power systems are fluctuating on half a dozen decks. And quite frankly, I think we'll be dealing with that for months. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mess, even if it is advanced. I would think months falls into the unacceptable category, but I look forward to seeing your repair schedule on my desk by tomorrow morning. Of course, sir. Uh, I will say, however, the voles are a bit of a problem that is contributing to our uh, our time frame. Have your people coordinate with, I believe the security chief's name is Stetko. See if they can stun the remainder of those. Of, of course, sir. I'll uh, liaise with Commander Stetko, and you see that he actually starts wincing when he mentions uh, Stetko's name. Uh, Do you have a problem with our security chief? Oh, no. She's a highly competent and dedicated and very efficient and terrifying officer. I think uh, you two should learn to work together then. Uh, what are you oh, implying, we'll... sir? Exposure or racist fear. That I'm trying or... to say, with time, you'll get over it. That or it just leads to some sort of horrible phobia, but I take your meaning, sir. Thank you. And Kiswick will down the rest of his drink. How did you find this place? Well, uh, I just sort of followed my nose. I was looking for a place that I might be able to take uh, Jaro when he arrived, and this seemed to be it. It does seem to have an atmosphere that is most welcoming. I'm also rather intrigued by uh, the proprietor. I, I just don't quite understand her. A Vulcan with pink hair in a lounge with pink lights and blue seems quite logical to me. Ah, ah, yeah, oh, yeah, very, very funny, sir. <clears throat> and Kiswick will just sort of have, like, plain stare at the joke he didn't intend to make. <clears throat> um, well, carry on. I believe I am doing ops. Very good, sir. Uh, I'll have that uh, re status report on the station and the vol infestation on your desk at uh, 0800 tomorrow. Well done, Mr. Jonna. Thank you, Captain. Kiswick will stand up, nod, and get another beer on his way out. Gotcha. Also, I would just like to point out, I would find it especially hilarious if he literally put the voles on your desk. Just literally, hey, here's a murder present. There's the infestation. There you go. Uh, you no, know, he is a cat. I mean, he's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I that's, brought you. That's the joke. That's the joke. Yeah. Yes. Oh lord. Make uh, it but, so. but before we get to ops, uh, we're actually going to cut to the bridge of the How, the the Centaur class vessel, uh, which is coming in and soon to be home, home ported at DSO, and we actually start off right at the bridge. Uh, on the bridge are currently two individuals. The first uh, looks quite similarly to one we've seen before. Commander Hatea uh, is the, again, spitting image of her twin sister. Again, green eyes, long dark hair. Uh, this time in a Starfleet uniform, Command Red with the rank of Commander. Uh, but then we have a certain hotshot pilot. And John, if you'd care to introduce your character. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Terrell is... Uh sitting behind the the panel uh right now not paying a whole lot of attention to what's going on um you can just barely see the edge of a tattoo out of the top of his uh out of the top of his uniform which is you know basically against regulation um but he's just 
you know, sitting back, uh, enjoying the leisurely stroll through the stars. Um, he kind of, he's kind of scanning the horizon, almost hoping for something to happen. And uh, looking for an excuse for something to happen. Well, I think uh, Hatea would see this and says, uh, Mr. Terrell, um, being a little bit lax there, aren't we? We're getting where we're going. So, you know, there's. We'll, we'll be there in a minute. Well, I'd like more than a minute. When precisely will we arrive on station? When do you want to get there? Well, I imagine the captain has already arrived and is looking for us, so the sooner the better. Perfect. Uh, he he sits up nicely and uh, dances his fingers across the panel, and uh, he uh, puts in uh, puts in a request to the station. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to prioritize our uh, our landing. All right. Roll me a uh, presence and a con, please. Difficulty of what? Hey, two successes. You're up to three momentum. And yeah, uh, station control replies back. Uh, how you are cleared at Darking Rain 2. Remember this time not to collide with the station. Yep. Yeah. It, it was a minor collision. <clears throat> uh, how out? And he turns over tor towards the commander. Permission to, to do a Romulan reverse? You want to engage the Picard maneuver and dock seconds after landing? Yeah, it'd be fun. Roll me a, uh, let's see if you can convince her. Roll me a, another presence con, but this time the difficulty will be a three. And determination. Take some momentum. I'm going to spend the momentum. <laughs> yes. <Nice. laughs> so this is how we all die. Yeah, this is how you all die. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, let's see. Do I have a focus? Uh, probably not. Uh, oh, so close. Too close. Yeah, so she, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll let it succeed at cost, but there will be a complication. Nice. Oh. All right. So uh, Hatea says, all right, let's see what you can do, Mr. Terrell. But um, if you dent the ship or you dent the station, you're fixing it. Bingo. And he dances his fingers across the panel again. Says, uh, you might want to hold on to something. All right. So we sort of see an external shot now of the how sort of moving in towards the station at a rapid pace. And then it's Nacelle's glow. And for just a very quick micro warp jump, uh, the ship leaps forward towards the station. And this is going to be a daring and a con for Terrell. The how will assist you with an engines and a con. The total difficulty is a four. Nice. Terrell flies better than Rasta. Oh. I will be... Uh... Oh. I'll be spending a determination, <laughs> All right. and and I'll also use the I'll also use up the last of the momentum. Oh my nice. god! <laughs> Thanks, John. Momentum. Thanks everybody for tuning into this one episode. <laughs> and I do have uh, precision maneuvering, uh, which I believe will lower the difficulty to three. There we go. That'd be Wait. five successes, thank you. All right, someone grab the HAL for me. Again, engines con. In before the ship complicates. Anybody grabbing the ship? I think you just volunteered. Yeah. Sorry, I, I just got it. Good. All right, hey, no <sighs> complication. So with five successes and getting two momentum, uh, to probably the fight, con the flight controllers, they're probably freaking out as the how sort of does that micro warp jump to the station. And in a cosmic sense, you've not gone very far, but instead of the station being sort of, you know, maybe fist sized on the view screen, your entire view screen is now that docking ring of that station. 
and you move in just as you come out of the uh, micro warp jump right up to where the gangplank begins to uh, sort of extend out of the ring and uh, connect with the howl. And uh, you're getting a very angry beep on your console from the station controller. But uh, hey, you made it just fine. How's intact. Station's intact. Good job. He forwards, he forwards the call to the commander. Uh, permission to go aboard the station, commander. Uh, why do I have a call on my console, lieutenant? All right. See you later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he and... Takes, out, it takes out towards the station. <laughs> And uh, as we switch scenes, we are actually going to go to the promenade of the station. Now, as far as the promenade is concerned, it is gigantic. Um, if I had to use DS9 as an example, um, DS9 is one fourth the size of this promenade. So this is a gigantic open space. Um, it stretches four stories tall. Uh, it has shops, it has embassies, it has everything you would expect to see on a starbase in terms of publicly accessible areas. And Kiswick, as you're walking along the promenade, sort of observing um, all the people that are here, um, one thing sticks out to you, and it didn't really hit you until now. You know there's Undine here. You know that there's some, you know, sort of melting pot some sort of illusion that's going on here but you know you may be expecting problems no i mean you're seeing people from all walks of life you're seeing andorians getting along with tellarites you're seeing vulcans conversing openly with orions you're seeing a klingon getting along well with a betazoid uh, it's actually kind of heartwarming in a way to see that everything is going well and that's when a Jeffrey's tube to your right opens up and a spider-like individual crawls out of it and begins taking off down the promenade. And I believe Stetco, this is your cue. Tell us a little bit about Stetco. Sure. So Arzu Stetco, uh, she's a lieutenant commander. Um, she stands at about five foot eight, uh, so 172 centimeters tall. She has uh, dark brown hair and sharp, attentive black irises, which would indicate her Bajoran, uh, not Bajoran, Betazoid heritage. Um, so although her, her entrance here might indicate a, like a rough and tumble attitude, her, her posture and attentiveness would suggest that she's in lockstep with her commanding officer. Gotcha. And yeah. So she will... Um, fly out of the Jeffrey's tube following the uh, spider like species, the archer, archer and uh, she'll tackle him and uh, kind of wrestle with him a little bit right in front of Kiswick as Keswick as he's walking down the promenade. You're, You're muted, Dag. <laughs> Keswick will recognize his chief, new chief of security from her personnel file <clears throat> and he'll step closer to the brawl chief setco do you need um help uh no no i got this cap uh so she'll like flatten his legs and kind of try and like hog tie them this is together. discrimination you wouldn't treat <laughs> anyone else like this you you're you're discriminating shut up, against me. Shut shut up. <laughs> he shuts up She'll kind of like look at Kishwick and be like, <laughs> and then she'll uh, she'll keep hog tying him and uh, pull out these like fancy cuffs and cuff them all together, cuff his legs together, and stand up and dust off her shirt. And she's like, oh, "Yeah, that's me, Chief Stetco, Lieutenant Commander." Is that a code four fifteen? Uh, a uh, a one two one two two, sir, uh, with aggravation. Aggravation. What's the Wilson, delta? that Ferengi was asking for it. <laughs> Shut, Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> um, he, uh, it was also, there was also a 624 and a stolen Jim gym, gym stick. She like It's wiggles. a Jim just stick. <laughs> she wiggles, she wiggles like the empty stick that she confiscated from him. Hey, those are the new binders, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're um magnetic constriction, wireless, uh 3 hour charge too. He's not getting out of that. Very good, Lieutenant. When you finished booking him, come to Ops. K. 
carry on. I sir. And I'm I'm actually imagining that Stetco maybe even literally picks up uh, this spider alien by the cuffs themselves. Like yeah. maybe there's maybe there's like a little anti gravity built into the cuffs that it's very easy for you to literally pick them up by the cuffs. Yeah, something like that. Like they're kind of floating. It's like it's maybe not it's not dragging and it's not floating, but just like lightening the load. I would think a little. Yeah, something like that. I love it. All right. So we now go to the ops of the station, the command deck. And uh, Kijwick, as you arrive, uh, what you see is uh, actually rather small ops, all things considered, uh, especially consider the nature of how large this station is. Um, but what you're seeing is that in the middle of the space, there is a holographic table and display above it um, that is currently showing the station and every single ship that is about to dock with the station. Uh, they're almost like little print pricks of lights with lines of text above them. And what you're also seeing is in the pit, as it were, there are six officers currently hard at work coordinating uh, both traffic in and out of the station. Uh, you also see around the command area, there are six other stations uh, only three of them are manned, but you're seeing sciences, you're seeing engineering readouts, basically everything you would ex expect to see on a starship, just in starbase form. But what might really catch your attention, Kijwick, is your office uh, over here to the left. And the office is unique in a ready room style in that it actually has a window that overlooks uh, all of ops. And sitting behind the desk of your ready room is a Vulcan. Um, looks to be fairly older, um, has a very serious expression, and they seem to be going through a multitude of pads. Hishwick will stand at the entrance to ops and look at the officers and wait a beat and then note that nobody said captain on the deck and will slowly walk to his office. All right. So you enter into your ready room. And sure enough, as you step in, uh, the Vulcan uh, looks up from the pads and says, Ah, Captain, it is good to see you. I was wondering how long you would take to get here. I had to stop for a beer, Chief. Ah, did you get it from Penthouse or that other shithole? Penthouse. Good. That's the good one. So I've noted. I'm hearing there are deficiencies in the engineering of the ship as well as the supplies and medical. Well, do you have the previous requisitions order? I do, yes. And uh, rest assured, they are coming next Tuesday. Why is it always Tuesday? Well, I could tell you how that is how logistics works, but somehow tells me you wouldn't be interested in such. You're right. I'm uh, fairly eager to claim this office. Yes, yes, one moment. And uh, he <laughs> finishes whatever he's doing on that sort of uh, desk computer, uh, stands up and offers you a pad and says, as of this moment, you have taken over command of the station. And Kiswick will take the pad and press his thumb to the plate to accept command. Uh, I accept command. You are relieved. Thank you. And uh, he uh, starts to make for the door, stops, turns around and says, Oh, and uh, if I find out you've done something to my station, I'll be back. And on that note... <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Oh. I'm waiting for Dag to find his words again. I'm just I'm just waiting. Let us hope when we see you again, it is not under negative circumstances. He nods and uh Arnold steps out. And Kijwick will stare out the window at his ops. All right. So let's actually go back to the uh, command deck here. 
because uh, if I read properly what's going on, uh, you put in an informal suggestion that you wanted your senior staff for a meeting. Uh, yes. Okay. So let's say for sake of argument that uh, Terrell, you're first up to uh, the command deck. And as you start to look around again, you see a very nice, very efficient sort of thing. Um, but one person in particular catches your eye, Terrell. And that is the fact that behind the desk is no longer that um, imposing Vulcan that was pretty much annoying you every moment of your existence. Now there's a older looking uh, gentleman there and um, a little bit more intimidating. I'll let that be your call. Uh, Terrell will go over to the railing um, and look for the officer that uh, you know, he's trying to place the voice with the uh, with the face, and he's looking for the one that he thinks is the officer that uh, was going to yell at him for uh, pulling into the docking uh, docking station the way he did. Okay. Uh, he... Why don't you roll me an insight and con difficulty of zero? Oh. Yeah, you have no idea. Like, you're trying to listen in to the pit, and you're just not picking out any particular voices that would match from earlier, unfortunately. Uh, he just leans over to the first one he sees. Hey, yeah, sorry about that. All good. And, and uh, then the woman yeah. looks up at you, a uh, human woman, uh, maybe about mid-30s, uh, long curly hair, uh, just sort of looks up at you and says, um, can I help you, Lieutenant? Oh, well, you probably never mind. Uh, yes, yeah, as you were. <laughs> she just sort of narrows her eyes slightly, then shrugs and goes back to playing uh, space traffic controller. Uh, and uh, uh, Terrell's Terrell's just gonna go take a seat over here for right now. All right. He doesn't want to be the first one in there, and Very he's nice. got his uh, he's got his feet up on the panel. That's to be expected. And uh, up next to arrive is actually a pair. We have uh, Jana and Datig, or Datig, arriving in the same turbo lift. I, I well, keep I have... on telling you, Doctor, I, I can't, I'm not in charge of requisitions, and I've got five engineering teams dealing with like a dozen different power failures. We'll get to sickbay. You're on the list. Well, I just hope that you manage to get to us before there's a major crisis, because you know what? If you need to have your leg reattached and I don't have main power, well, I hope you have you ever seen an old Earth pirate film with the peg legs, because that will be you. What's a pirate? Ah, uh, uh, Terrell walks up to John up and like, <laughs> uh, kind of slaps him on the uh, shoulder. Oh, you'd look good with a peg leg and a, and a parrot. Could I eat it? You know, you, I mean, you, on paper, you probably yeah. could. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a that's a good sort of store of food. And by the way, yeah, it's it's good to see you again, kind of. It's great to see you. Hey, uh, didn't even didn't even scratch the paint on a full Romulan reverse. And and why did you feel that it was necessary to undertake a full Romulan reverse? You know, just testing the ship. That ship is older than the two of us put together. I wouldn't be testing anything on it. You know, I gotta I gotta ease into the old lady. That's a disturbing image. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Um, great. How did she hold up? Surprisingly well. Um, yeah, you know, the uh, oh shit, she's gonna be oh yeah. Well, our soon to be XO, uh, I think, was the captain of the ship. So, well, that might not have been the best first impression. Speaking well, of first impressions, she knows what to expect. Stetko, you arrive pretty much right behind this uh, conversation. Yeah, she uh, steps out of the out of the turbo lift. She's like, "Oh, hey, Doc, what's up, Jana? Did you tell him about the voles?" 
look, I, I, I had to tell him that they're a serious problem on the station. Yeah, they are. They're your problem, not mine. I already wasted enough Ensign's time trying to, trying to track those down after my sensors aren't working correctly. Look, that sounds like it's kind of racist. Just because I'm a cat and I was talking about eating birds a minute ago does not mean that I'm going to crawl around in Jeffrey's tubes and hunt giant what rats. Um, what is this about the voles? John, you're lucky there's not a score in this room right now. I think he would be lucky about that, but you know. Who are you? Just Terrell just looks you. around. <laughs> oh, me? Oh, uh, Lieutenant Terrell, pleased to meet you, sir, ma'am. That's uh, Chief. Chief. All right, that's easier. Or do you prefer Chief Des? Just Chief is fine. All right, yeah, just trying to be sensitive. And you will see that Jana is just making this, you know, throat cutting maneuver from behind uh, <laughs> the, the lieutenant commander's back. Just oh, she can't see it. Okay, <laughs> stop. Listen, stop. <laughs> listen, young man. As much as I enjoy watching you put your foot in your own mouth. If the chief breaks your face, I'm the one who's going to have to fix it. So I'm just going to go. <laughs> Wait a second. Were you the one that pulled that maneuver in the docking bay? So uh, we're supposed to go meet with the captain now. Uh, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> and he starts walking towards the <laughs> ready room. She'll just follow, like, probably alongside Jana mm -hmm. or something. So, uh, Captain, of course, you see there's a congregation of people sort of lingering outside your office. Would you take them in the office? Would you just sort of have a meeting out there in ops? You know, where would, you, where would the meeting take place? You are also muted, Dag, as is tradition. <laughs> Kijwick will step to the threshold of the door uh, just enough to have it slide open. Mm -hmm. And then he will bark out in the ops. If we could uh, get the senior staff meeting underway, that'd be great. And he'll step back into his office. Uh, so uh, Stetco will immediately try and like herd. Herd everybody in, I guess. Herd everybody. <laughs> All the nerve. <laughs> Right. She's little, literally hurting cats. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I neglect, I refrain for a reason. <laughs> so. All right. So we get everybody into the captain's office. And uh, as you come in, uh, you know, Kijwick, you maybe start to begin the meeting. And then uh, Hatea arrives a little bit flustered, a little bit uh, out of breath, and says, <sighs> Okay, uh, sorry, Captain. I was dealing with um, a certain someone who uh, did a full Romulan reverse. Yes, the Doc Master made that uh, priority report when I opened my computer today. And anybody who's looking at the Captain's desk would see a hollow of a planet that seems to be mostly a water world with statistics coming off of it detailing updates to its ecology. Uh, glad you could make it, Commander Hatea. It is nice to meet you. Likewise, Captain. I've read good things. All right, everybody. Looks like the station is not at 100%, so I want to make sure that we get daily reports on its deficiencies until we are where we need to be. Your requisitions need to be filed with the chief requisition officer, and I have worked with that person to make sure that they are filing reports by 0800 daily. So if you need anything, contact them. Stetco. Yes, uh, sir. Do you have all of your staff? Uh, we should be good, sir. I think we have a, a few more arriving by transport in the next few weeks. All right. Um, remind me, what type phaser are, is the armory stocked with? Uh, type two. Actually, all types. We, have also, we also have multiple armories, sir. 
All right. I will arrange for your quartermaster to send me an inventory. Dr. Datig, after your biomimetic gel, did I say that right? Yes. Have you been able to send any further requisitions to the officer in charge? Well, I've been forwarding most of my concerns to Lieutenant Jana, who is very keen to point out that this is not his department. And he would be correct, because <laughs> Lieutenant Dorset is the requisitions officer. Well, I don't like Lieutenant Dorset. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell just laughs. Very good. And Kiswick will, quick, Kiswick will quickly side-eye Terrell. Oh, yeah. And Stecco's like, how dare you? <laughs> you have something to say, Mr. Terrell? Oh, it, it, was, it was just funny, sir. Hmm. Dr. Dottig, you may continue. Thank you, Captain. Uh, all in all, the... I hesitate to use the term sick bay. It is a hospital. And it is very well constructed, all things considered. But uh, just a few minor complaints. The staff, both Starfleet and groundskeepers, are quite good. Uh, good. We will get this place up to frontier spec in no time. Excellent. I want you to know that the how is calling our station home now. So if I ever need to take it out, I expect you to be part of that team. Well, it wouldn't do for me to stay cooped up here all the time. I'm glad we're in agreement. Lieutenant Jana, good to see you again. Likewise, Captain. Thank you. Uh, had Stedko, I told Jana to coordinate with you to get rid of the bulls. Do you have any deputies that you can send uh, to the critical locations on the station to make sure they're not chewing through reactor conduits or other things? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could spare, I could spare a few, but you know, Terrell, um, I don't think he's busy. Terrell is definitely busy and Kiswick will send like a knowing glare Oh, yeah. Always busy. You know, but I did I did spend quite a bit of time with security and engineering classes, so. On which side of the brig? Both. Captain. Both? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Your report is incomplete. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Jana. Can you give me a status update on the station's reactors? Well, sir, uh, secondary EPS conduits throughout the station have been under undue strain with all the traffic that's coming in. The station really shouldn't have been put into operation so quickly. We're feeling the effects of that. However, uh, most of the reactors are still fully operational. My concern would be that the vol infestation might disrupt some critical junction points. Um, I put together a bit of a plan that Commander Stetko might be able to use. If we reroute and inverse the polarity of the plasma flow, we might essentially be able to create a series of... In case Rick will hold up his hand, mm -hmm. I will let you and Stetko deal with the details. I trust you and your plan. Uh, also, I'd like to spend two threat that all of you hear something clanging in the ceiling. Oh no. Is that what that is? That's a vole? Kiswick will draw his phaser. Yeah. Right, um, Psycho will do. I've been hearing this for weeks above my office. Computer, and... give me a full biometric analysis of the life forms immediately above the station's office. There are approximately four voles located above the captain's office. Jana, you think you might be able to jury rig a transporter lock before I melt the roof of my office? Give you one second, 
Captain. Uh, and he will tap his comm badge. Uh, Transporter Chief Hoyos, uh, would you lock on to four vol life signs above my current uh, communicator location and uh, beam them into a, one of Lieutenant Commander Stetko's holding cells? Hi, sir. Uh, why are we saving voles? Well, you can eat them. I'm sure Dr. Dada can find some research opportunity for them. I was about to say they're Fertile ground for medical research. We don't need a triple infestation, Doctor. Well, uh, just the eradication of the problem can itself be a social experiment. Hear me out. We seal the Jeffrey's tubes and ducts that they're scurrying around in, and we flood them with acetylcholine. Promoting just a their... second, Doctor. And Kiswick is listening for a transporter hum. Yeah, you hear a transporter hum, and the transport completes, and the noise up there has definitely lessened, but uh, uh, there's still something up there. At that, mm. uh, would it be possible to access a Jeffrey's tube uh, from this area in order to get up there? Yeah, uh, I would say that the captain does have one uh, behind his desk that you could get into. Sure, I'll give John a boost. You're always supporting me. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that, Jaro. You might uh, want to take this, Lieutenant. Commander Stecco, do you, do you, thank you, and he will take the phaser. Do you, do you want to help me with that? Um, I'll go first. All right. Uh, so, sir, do you mind? I'm going to step on his desk. Go ahead. So what I would say is that, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, Jana, you're sort of at the head of this procession, right? I'll be, be wisest, considering he's most familiar with the Jeffrey's tube systems, and followed okay. up by Stetco. Well, I say that because as you open up the panel and try to get up into the ceiling, what drops onto your face is not a vole, but a Talarian hook spider. Ooh. Which, if you've never seen a Talarian hook spider, they are these dog-sized, blue in color... Uh, you know, six... I think if they have... I think they have six legs, not eight, so maybe not technically a spider. Um... But this large, like, cocker spaniel-sized spider drops onto your face, and its mandibles are clicking into your face. He is just going to start screaming, and he dropped to the floor, attempting to rip it off his face. Uh, yeah, so, so Stetko's gonna try and shoot it. Okay, that's here we go. This is how the, the crew dies. Two complications. That's how I die. Uh, all right, so Stetco, I need you to do me a uh, control and a security, please. Difficulty of two. I thought the voles were rodents. Um, energy based small arms technology. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one success. So in a what's probably going to be the new B plot of the station, you fire your phaser and Kijwick, you you just sort of watch as the phaser just misses the hook spider completely, misses you, and just impacts your window behind you. Uh Terrell wants to help his friend, so he's gonna try to kick the spider. <laughs> Okay, uh, that is going to be a daring and a security, please. Difficulty of one, but it is contested. Oh, boy. I feel like Jana's about to get kicked in the face. There's a hole in the, in the window. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use uh, one of those momentum. All right. Three successes. I think they have to double crit here to succeed. They roll a complication. So how would you like to kick this thing? Uh, so that's exactly it. Uh, he kicks it right up against the um, right up against the observation window out to comm, out to the out to the comms area, and uh, you know splatters or whatever the spider on the window. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it does that sort of Looney Tunes things where, it, you know, sort of sprays green goo all over the all over the window. And then it just sort of comically slides down the window and onto the bulkhead and then onto the floor. And then he helps his friend up. Oh, God. How did hook spiders get on the station? I, oh, oh, got my mouth. Oh. 
Chief Setko. Yes, sir. Can you coordinate with the dock master to conduct uh, scans of all incoming shipments to make sure we don't get any more of these kinds of creatures on our station? Um, sir, once you have a hook spider, you probably have more. Then it falls to you to make sure any eggs on the station do not hatch. Aye, sir. Dot egg. I'd like you to roll me yes. an insight medicine, please. Difficulty of one to see if you suss out something in particular. You would have a focus. Okay. While you're rolling, Kishwick is checking out the any damage done to the transparisteel that is uh, at the window. Eh, perfectly fine. Phaser was unstunned. Oh. So. Uh, I'm going to take Ooh. two threat because I think it's interesting here. Okay. Datig, you sort of maybe out of curiosity, you pull up that transporter log. Those weren't voles that you transported away. Those were other hook spiders. And as a reminder, the computer did say they were voles. So... On the what is it, Doctor? On the hunch, I checked the transporter logs, and well, the holding cell has a whole bunch of Talarian hook spiders in there. The internal sensors seem to still be malfunctioning, Lieutenant Jana. You may want to get on that. A moment. Uh, Lieutenant Jana's engineering. Ensign, uh, Ensign Varel, are you down there? And there's a pause, and then you hear someone hit their head and goes, Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm here. What, What's up, Chief? Uh, okay. Uh, I need you to uh, to reinstall those isolinear backups that we were discussing for the, uh, the cryoneural gel packs. I, I think that they might be interacting in an unexpected fashion with the internal sensor grid. Coordinate with security to make certain that, uh, well that the life form detection systems are actually functioning properly. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get on that right away, sir. Um, also question for you. Did you mean to do a code 17, six earlier? I ordered a code 16, six. Oh, well then I'm just going to pretend that I need to get back to this Jeffrey's tube. Okay. Bye. That was odd. Man, we, we, we got to review those procedural codes. My uh, my knowledge of your department is limited, but would there need to be some kind of recalibration to the transporter biofilters? Uh, actually, sir, it's it's not the transporters themselves. With all due respect, it's it's actually the sensor systems that are yoked into them. The uh, the Heisenberg compensators and the like, they're all in perfect operation. It's uh, it's the internal sensor grid that has to be addressed. So we might not even have a vol problem. <laughs> yes, you may have a Talarian hook spider problem. All right. Let's uh, keep a tally of the hook spiders. Stetko, you've got some hook spiders in your brig. What do you plan to do with them? Vent them into space. I like this idea, but let's not get off on the wrong foot here. Uh, I already shot your window, sir, so... No damage done. Uh, yes, so what, what would you like to have done with them? Um, I don't know, coordinate with Dodig. He seems to be rather exuberant about the possibility of experimenting on them. I Back. wouldn't experiment on them, but uh, anatomical study. Uh, but you, do you see how aggressive they are? Hatea actually speaks up and says, um, I was sort of just going to not say anything, but I understand that some species on the station would consider fried hook spider a delicacy we might be able to uh to borrow a ferengi term uh turn a profit here if we were to shall we say um capture and cook these spiders 
Well, that sounds horrible. I hope that would not incentivize the wait staff to begin crawling through our Jeffrey's tubes looking for a new delicacy to put on the menu. Well, the bright side, sir, is that uh, we'd be very quickly rid of our problem. You raised a good point. Number one, lead as you see fit on that. Aye, sir. And uh, Hatel actually looks at everyone else as if to say, okay, now that he's officially put me in charge, I'm in charge kind of a thing. And as you know, you all are reacting into this. Um, Captain, you get a little chime on your desk computer. Excuse me. And he will check the alert to see who might be calling. And Jay, go ahead and give us an extra momentum because of my untapped potential. Oh yeah, untapped potential. Um, yeah, Kidwick, uh, what you're seeing is that there is someone named Boothby here to see you. Boothby? Wasn't he the groundskeeper at the academy? Yes, sir. He's got to be like 140 years old. What is he doing on the station? And Kiswick will tap the computer to receive the transmission. Okay. So, Kiswick. Uh, as you sort of get the transmission, sure enough, appearing on your uh, little computer there is Boothby in all of his elderly old man gardener sort of visage. Um, but you notice very quickly that this is not Boothby back at the academy. This is Boothby in the middle of an Undine ship. And uh, Boothby, quote unquote, says, Ah, Captain, I was wondering if I was going to be able to get a word in. Are you ready for our little experiment? Forgive me, it will take me a little time to get used to the groundskeepers adopting familiar visages. But yes, you may proceed. Very well. And uh, the transmission actually cuts off. And all of you sort of, you know, start to wonder what the hell was that all about? When the station automatically goes to red alert as you all look out the window behind the captain and a quantum singularity opens up. And that's where we're going to take our 10 minute break. So we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes. Everybody stick around.
Apparently we're muted on stream. Okay, now that I'm not muted on stream and people can hear me, uh, what was I saying? Yes. <laughs> so uh, what we sort of return to is off of the port side of the station, um, what we see is this green and orange vortex um, open up and the newly formed singularity swirls as if not unlike a black hole, but also not unlike a wormhole, um, just sort of swirls and sort of exists. Yeah. Um, but after a moment, uh, Kijwick, you get another hail from Boothby. Kijwick will reach behind him and tap the receiver. And uh, Boothby comes over the comms and says, Well, Captain, uh, our duty's done. We now have you a connection to the Shackleton Expanse to use at your leisure. Well done. So, um, now that I say that, there does appear to be a complication. Go ahead. Well, as you well may know, the Groundskeepers faction, which I am the head of, we are the friendly ones with the Federation. Let's just say our little stunt has attracted the attention of Undine, who are, shall we say, not as enthused about the Federation. Now, of course, they're not going to be able to disrupt what we've set up. However, I have about two of their ships trapped in the, um, what would you call it? The manifold? The transporter bank? Uh, basically, I've got two ships in limbo that need to be dealt with at some point. Hmm. Are they in your transporter buffer? I can shift them to real space or to fluidic space at my leisure, yes. But um, again, to be blunt, uh, we weren't expecting to have to deal with uh, shooting our own, if that makes any sense. Would uh, would you be able to take care of this? Understood. Um, Commander Hatea, can you bring the how around? Hi, sir. Would you like me on the bridge? Yes on it. And uh, Hatea makes a beeline for the door into a turbo lift. Uh, Terrell just goes to, f just starts to follow. Okay. And not being stopped, goes after. Yeah. <clears throat> Kiswick's okay with that. Uh, Captain, are we preparing for a possible confrontation with the Undine? Yeah, you're going to want to get back to uh, Med base. Stetco, can you arrange? Uh, shields up. Yeah, shields up. Uh, get then warm up the torpedo launchers. And uh, Captain, if you'll permit me, I'm going to get down to main engineering. Sounds good. Dismissed. Uh, you're, buzz you're buzzing again, Jonna. Boothby, uh, if you want to give us mm, three minutes and then let them materialize into our space, we can take it from there. Very good. Just give the signal. And we'll just do a quick time shift. Yep, we shift to about four minutes position. later as the how undocks and sort of swings around uh, towards the uh, towards the gate itself. And right on cue, and right as you give the signal, uh, what comes out of the gate are two Undine bio ships. And uh, you can uh, tell both on the How and on Deep Space October that their weapons are very much charged at the moment. Stetco, open a channel. Hi, sir. Right, channel this is, is Captain open. Kiswick of Deep Space October. I recommend you stand down unless you want to face the wrath of the 20,000 torpedoes I'm aiming at your ships. Your call. Go ahead and roll me a uh, presence command. Uh, difficulty of four. And it looks like you do have four momentum at the moment. All right. I am... Uh, so this is a task to persuade someone not to resort to violence so I can add a bonus d20 to my dice pool. Yeah, Diffused Attention. That is a very useful talent. 
and then I will spend two momentum for an additional dice. You got it. So 40, 20. And we'll go with diplomacy as a focus. Most definitely. <sighs> Very nice. That is five successes. You get one momentum back. Nice. And uh, one of the Undine ships uh, looks like it's wanting to go back in the gate. It sort of does almost a weird thing where the ship turns, uh, looks like it's going back into the gate, thinks better of it, and turns back to the station, and then finally turns out to open space and goes to warp away from both. Um, however, one of the ships still remains behind, and... Uh, it, Correct me if I'm wrong, but Stetko, uh, you are full Betazoid, half Betazoid? Um, half. She's an empath. Empath. You are getting an overwhelming urge of murderous intent from this remaining bio ship. Uh, sir, they're not looking to make friends or even to talk. Then give them one of your handshakes. Aye. All right, so we are going to go into initiative order here. I don't expect to be there long, but we will anyway. And it is the player's turn first. So, Stetko, I believe you are shooting the bio ship? I will. All right, what are you shooting them with? Are you shooting them with your phasers, or are you shooting them with uh, your torpedoes? A torpedo. Now, just so you know, torpedoes do give me threat every time you fire them. Yeah, that's okay. All righty. So... Uh, let's check ranges here, because that could factor in. So the optimal range for a torpedo is 7 to 10 units. And okay. it looks like the bio ship is within 6, 5 to 7. So it would actually be more difficult to use your torpedoes here. Oh, really? Um, if you okay. use your phasers, though, uh, they would be an optimal range for your phasers. Okay, so we're on the station. We're not on the how. how Correct. Do we Okay. Um, in that case, we'll do full phasers. Okay. That is going to be a control and a security. And the station will assist you with a weapons and a security. Difficulty of two. Weapons. Starship star based security systems? Yeah, I'd let it happen. Okay. All right. That's a good start. Three successes, four successes. You get two momentum. And yeah, this is also sort of uh, to get us familiar with the, sh the station sheet. Go ahead and roll your phaser damage on the station, which for you, I believe, is a whopping 15 challenge die. Okay, I don't see the challenge dice. Uh, the macro should be the same as before, which we had in Fenrir. You may just have to put it in your bar. And remember, that's under the uh, bulleted list icon up at the top next to the gear. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Challenge dice 15. Yep. Okay. You have two floating momentum, which you can spend on rerolls or adding effects. Um, I'll reroll two. Okay. So you're going to reroll all those zeros? Yeah. Okay. How many do I have? Uh, looks like six. One, Oh, good lord. All right, so that is uh, another four damage. Uh, what are you doing with your other floating momentum? What What's my option? You may spend it to add one damage for the one momentum. Okay. You can spend the one momentum to get rid of two resistance. Uh, you can also opt to make this a devastating attack, but in the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't recommend that one. Um... We'll go with the extra damage. All righty. So uh, the lateral arrays of the saucer section of the station, uh, we sort of see the phaser strips illuminate as they coalesce into a single stream of energy that lances out and strikes the bio ship midship. And you deal a significant blow. Not only do you tear through their shields, um, but you quite literally 
uh, nearly knocked them out of the fight instantly. That's how powerful these station compute or station phasers are. Um, however, they are still standing, if only just. Do you want to talk now? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to roll something for them here. Uh, this will be... Let's do their presence and command versus your presence and command. Um, we'll say the base difficulty is a one. Um, and let's see what the number to beat here. Yeah, they don't even succeed. So no rolls required. Like I said, we weren't going to stay in initiative long. Um, I think like a broken uh, limping predator, uh, the bio ship is going to turn and limp away from the station and the gate uh, until it more or less exit the area on impulse power. Can I have uh, Commander Hatea track it until yeah. it leaves? Just to give it a swift kick in the ass on the way out the door? Yeah. My only question would be to Terrell, how close would you follow it? Um, <clears throat> optimum range for phasers. <laughs> Fair enough. So, you know, you, you scurry off that way. But yeah, and then, uh, go ahead. Stedco, can you get a lock on the other ship that turned away with long-range sensors? I can try. Yeah, you see that they're basically headed uh, deeper into the Sabine Expanse. Uh, shouldn't be a problem where they're heading. Uh, they're running away with their tail between their legs. No offense, Jana. I have enough bridge, so he wouldn't Oh. <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Kiswick to Jana. Uh, yes, Captain. I uh, just want to let you know that uh, whatever power supply is running the phaser arrays, it's living up to expectations. Good job. Thank you, sir. I'll pass your compliments on to my engineering teams. Right on. Kiswick out. Stedco, good, good aim. Thank you, sir. That was most impressive. All right. And uh, he'll open another channel. Boothby, are you still out there? I am. How's it? Uh, saw you sent those uh, whippersnappers packing. Uh, good job. I have my crew to thank for that. Will you be staying long? No, unfortunately, I'm needed as the uh, Troust is having an issue in the Delta Quadrant. But uh, if you need me, just ask one of my people on station. There are a number of them. Understood. Station out. And then uh, one of the ensigns sort of turns to Stetko and says, are we, are we supposed to stand down from Red Alert now, or do we wait for the captain to... Uh, stand down. Okay, so the uh, running lights of the station cut off. They go back to sort of that unilluminated state, and the uh, warning klaxon also goes off. Well, all in a day's work. Not bad for our first encounter, sir. Haven't got to do that yet. Well, let's hope we don't have to do it more frequently. Oh, we will. Why do I believe you? <laughs> We're in the expanse, sir. First spiders, now Undine. I guess that's a logarithmic expansion of risk. Math was never my subject. Me either. We'll leave it up to Jana. Kiswick to Dr. Dodig. Dodig here, Captain. Do you have any scared people coming in due to the recent? interaction in the undine are running away no it is uh as quiet as a churched mouse oh that's good and if i might interrupt actually uh Dottig, you say that and then walking into your sick bay is a very large man um very uh very imposing looking uh he is a security gold and what you notice most about him is his beard and his overall facial appearance is that of a Viking. Like, he is, like, full, strong Nordic blood, impressive beard. Like, this is a man you could give a guitar, and he would do an awesome metal solo. Um, but at the moment, 
The only problem is that his arm is literally being held by his other arm, as in completely detached. What have you done? And uh, with with a voice that says he's not experiencing any pain at all, he just very plainly says, "The I was um I was in Jeffrey's tube. I found Hook Spider. Uh, basically went and eradicated whole whole nest. But um, they uh they bit off arm. Uh, can you fix? As it happens, yes, I certainly can. Um, are you feeling any pain? A well, little pain, but this is nothing. I have had much worse. Intriguing. Would you consent to some neurological scans? Of course, Doctor. Whatever you feel is necessary. Perfect. And Please uh, come with me. As you lead him to a bio bed and you sit down, I'd like to imagine that instead of the name Jensen popping up, you see the name Jenkins. All oh, right. God. Mr. Jenkins, let's take a look at your arm, and I'd also like to have a look at your neural architecture. Most curious, your tolerance to what I would only imagine is excruciating pain. Yeah, like you're looking at the readouts. He should be screaming in pain right now, but no, he's just sort of like, here's my arm, Doc. Hmm. I wonder if it's a function of the spider venom, perhaps maybe some sort of paralytic or uh, sedative. Well, <laughs> never mind me. Just thinking out loud. Let's uh, let's see to this arm first. All right. So we're actually going to cut ahead, maybe about a few days after all this has occurred. And uh, Kijwick, if you don't mind me taking just a little bit of agency from you for a moment. Uh, you're walking along the promenade again, and again, everything's fine. Everybody's getting along, you know, shining example of what the Federation can be. Um, however, as you sort of pass by uh, one of the exterior windows that looks out in the direction of the new fluidic gate, you see someone that doesn't really fit in with everyone else. I mean, sure, you have many, many cultures here that are, you know, different uh, clothing, different styles. This man looks like he was taken from almost like a backwater um, colony or a backwater location on Earth where his clothes are ragged. Um, they look to be anachronistic. They seem to be many centuries out of date. Um, he has a scraggy white and gray beard, um, sort of a rough and tumble hat that maybe was, you know, kind of a, a fedora or some sort of a, a fancy hat at one point, but it's just seen so much wear and tear that you can't really place what it's meant to be anymore. And peeking out from underneath the hat are some strands of white and gray hair. And he doesn't really seem to be doing anything wrong. He's just sort of staring out at the uh, fluidic gate. Fishwick will walk right up to him. Mm -hmm. I am Captain Kiswick of the station. Who are you? And he doesn't actually turn to even look at you. He just sort of continues looking out and says, You guys have come far. You've uh, made some good progress here. You didn't answer my question. I think I'll stick around and see what happens with you all. Kiswick is going to attempt to just sense hostility somehow from him, mm -hmm. shadiness beyond what he's already expressing, any kind of hidden motive. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an insight and a command, maybe. Let's call it a difficulty of three. Okay. And... Uh, with if, deception detective, deception, can I use a momentum or do I wait till I succeed in the role? I believe you have to wait till you succeed the role. Okay. All right. Um, diplomacy here? I'll give it to you. Okay. Um, buy some extra dice, maybe two. I'll just, yeah, I'll spend one momentum for a third dice. All right. And we'll submit with a focus. Oof. All right. 
So, yeah, you can't really get a read on this guy. He's, uh, for lack of a better term, it's almost as if he's not even there. Hmm. What brings you to the station, Mr. And he lets it linger to try and get that name still. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's at this point that he actually finally turns to you and sort of looks you up and down and says, you've come far too. And unless you like recoil or otherwise stop him, he'll sort of pat you on the shoulder and walk past you into the crowd. Um, I will attempt to, Kizwick will attempt to grab his arm okay. and hold him back. Uh, he's got his hand on my shoulder. He doesn't realize that is a Zaldin greeting. Um, and uh, Kizwick will attempt to just grab his shoulder. Okay. Uh, we'll treat this like an unarmed attack. So just a daring as a security difficulty of one. And I'm going to roll in secret for him. So okay. normally I would tell you what the difficulty, but I'm going to roll in secret. I'm going to say I don't have a focus for this because I'm not actively trying to fight him. Mm -hmm. uh. I would say even without me needing to roll then, with zero successes, you go to put your hand on his or to take hold of his shoulder, and he's already slipped past you into the crowd. And as you try to, you know, maybe comb through the crowd to keep finding him, it's one of those standard tropes where, you know, guy walks into crowd, you follow into crowd, he's nowhere to be seen. Exact same thing has happened here. And Kiswick will just piercing glare into the crowd for a few seconds. <sighs> And then he will exit the area and head to Stetko's office. Alrighty. So uh, we go to Stetko's office, which is actually one of the major station or major locations on the Starbase, uh, simply because it is one of the very few places um, that you can control not only security. But uh, everything going in and out of the station from one singular place. Um, so let me get uh, Stetko there. All right. And then Kiswick walks in. Go for it. Stetko. Oh, she will immediately, like, she'll have been on a console. She turns around and stands at attention. As you were. I need you to bring up the camera feed from Promenade Section J12. There was a peculiar individual there that uh, we got here. See a threat? It was very suspicious. Uh, time index, 20 minutes ago. She turns around and tries to find it in the system. Yeah, and to borrow a, uh, a line from Picard, as it were, what happens is you call up the security feed you see Kijwick talking, but he's not talking to anyone. It's just, just Kijwick at the window. And then Kijwick almost like, you know, someone touches him. He, he instinctively sort of moves a little bit as if to touch the someone back. But again, no one's there. So, so Arzu will, um, so would you say GM that mm -hmm. you could, sense empathic feeling through a recording i would say no um that is no, but something... like if through a view screen in tng yes but maybe not like a past recording yeah like if it was a view screen okay. i would let it happen but because it is literally in the past yeah it, as far as i know betazoids can't time travel so 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 before she shows him she will uh turn to him and, and get a feel of like if he's being authentic like, if he believes what he's saying. Now that's your call, Kizwick. You're staring at me. Yes. Um, you should tell him take a look at this. And Kizwick will peer into the monitor and proposedly see the same thing. Yeah, you see the same thing. <sighs> Kizwick to Jana. Uh, yes, Captain. How can I help you? Um, do you have any 
interfering signals or sensor weirdness on promenade section J12 in the last 20, 25 minutes? Uh, if you'll give me a minute to double check our internal sensor records of that, uh, I don't have any engineering teams down there and nothing has been reported. But uh, again, the station's a bit of a mess, sir. Would you like me to double check the logs? Please double check the logs. Call me back if you find something. Uh, very good, sir. And, and Jada, uh, what I would say, logs say nothing. In fact, of all the problems you were having, that actually that section of the promenade is working perfectly. Uh, could I perhaps double check the uh, the sensor systems and the recording systems themselves to see if they've been tampered with? Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll me an insight engineering difficulty of one. And I know my ship would apply. Oh, in that case, it would be a difficulty of zero. It's a very good talent to have. Three successes. Yeah, again, that section of the promenade, awesome. You don't think you're going to have to do any real maintenance on it in a while. Captain, oh. um, did you, was there anyone around you that, um, that you saw might have been a witness? No one of note, but if you would like to identify any of the people in this recording and perhaps question them on what they saw and let me know, I will be in sick bay. All right, I'll see what I can do. And Kiswick will nod and leave the office. And as he is walking uh, to the nearest turbo lift, uh, he taps his badge. Uh, Captain Kiswick to Dr. Dodig. Go ahead, Captain. Uh, I need a level two, uh, your terminology, I don't even know it, man. I, I had a weird experience on the promenade, and I need to see if I'm hallucinating. Yes, certainly. A simple neurological scan should uh, detect any abnormalities in your neural pathways. I will be there in six minutes. Kijwick out. And sure enough, six minutes later, uh, Kijwick, you walk inside and walking out is Mr. Jenkins. And Jenkins is fine. Arm has been reattached. No problems. And uh, he actually says, oh, excuse me, Captain. And uh, actually makes way for you to step past him rather than him stepping past you. And Kiswick will make no note of the interaction and walk past him. All right. Doctor? In here, Captain. And Kiswick will follow the noise. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it leads you to the sort of that center operating area where the main uh, sick bay bed is. And uh, I'm going to let Dottig describe what, if anything, he's set up at this point. Um, Dottig, at this point, um, is going to run the preliminary scan because, because of the issues with the internal sensors. Uh, he is a little leery of the sick bay equipment that's actually um, tied into main power. So he's actually got a handheld medical tricorder mm -hmm. that he's going to be using to take the initial scan. Um, and at which point, if anything is revealed, then he may proceed to uh, another piece of machinery. Okay. Uh, reason medicine difficulty of one, please. Right. And uh, would my focus in neuroscience apply here? I would say it would, yeah. Oh, mm. had to happen. Hmm. Double complication. Okay. Had to happen. Well, <laughs> here's yes. what happens. Uh, mm -hmm. You go to scan the captain, and your tricorder just kind of goes, Err, and you're like, what the hell is that noise? And then you scan him again, makes the same sort of, Err, and now you're like slapping it, you're doing percussive maintenance on it, and then all of a sudden, it just sort of begins to vibrate and spark, and you let it go, and it sort of drops to the floor and catches fire. They don't normally do that. 
and uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to stamp out the fire with my yeah my shoes uh, if the fire suppression system doesn't come on automatically that is uh, I mean, it automatically comes on and the way the fire suppression in Star Trek works is it literally forms a force field over the area, pulls out the oxygen, and it, you know, kills the fire instantly. Boy. All right. Well, let's try the bio bed instead. And yeah, if you want to roll me another reason medicine difficulty of one. <laughs> If you roll double complications here, I'm just going to keep burning your beds and equipment until you stop rolling complications. All right, here we go. Ah, Complete opposite. You get double crits. Very nice. Um, Yeah, Captain is in immaculate health. He is a spitting image of a 75, 76. I honestly forget the, the number. But uh, yeah, he's peak physical form. You're the picture of health for a man your age. Uh, I would say as healthy as a man 10 years younger. Thank you, doctor. That still does not answer my question. Tell me, is it the first time that you've experienced anything like this? Yes. I Very walked good. up to a man on the promenade. He was looking at the new wormhole that was established. And he said, we've come a long way. And he turned to me and said, I've come a long way. And then he gripped my shoulder and left. Hmm. Was this, um, this man, was he in any way familiar? Not that I can recall. Very good. Hmm. Um, GM, do we? We've got. I've got some floating momentum on that. Three by my count. Yeah. Could. Um, is it possible that stellar radiation from the open fluidic gate may have had some part in this? I I'm would say for, that uh, while you are noticing there is an effect on your longer term samples, like in experiments you may have running, mm-hmm. but there's nothing to indicate that it's affecting like actual people. So maybe, you know, if it's a radiation sensitive experiment, that's where you're seeing there's problems. But as far as people are concerned, not so much. I have uh, no explanation currently but um if you would consent i could fit you with a subdermal bioprobe um we could uh, have real-time readouts here in sick bay of uh, your vital functions and that way we may be able to line up to see if there is an actual physiological change if this happened sure very good. Uh, nurse prepared one uh, hypo spray with a subdermal biosensor. And Nurse Chan immediately just sort of hands you a, a hypo spray as if anticipating this request. She's, she's very good. And I'll inject the captain in the neck. And uh, I'll just say, please make a prompt report the next time if this ever happens again. Those. Uh, Subdermal probes should remain active in your bloodstream for about 15 days. Thank you, doctor. And Kiswick will head out and chalk up the experience to something strange. And I think uh, on that note, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of pull out one of your nearby windows as you continue walking in the station. And we, of course, see the external shot of the starbase uh, in the background. You can see that fluidic gate. And that's where we're going to end our very first session. What would you guys think? Did you enjoy it? It was cool. Absolutely. Excellent. It's been a lot of fun. I want my interaction with Terrell 
Terrible. I actually wanted to do that next session because I wanted to give you guys ample time to dress each other down, as it were. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Nice. Yeah, it was great. Love it. I'm super excited. Excellent. All right. Well, stream, uh, I know we had a few technical difficulties, but uh, hopefully by next stream we'll have gotten the gremlins out. But uh, to everyone watching on Twitch and YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in, and you will see these lovely people next week. Until then, see you later, stream.